recording. And we'll just fucking start. <laughs> All right, so we um, we did a little experiment here, and um, I'm not sure what you guys thought of it, but I enjoyed it. Um, we did uh, we did we did under rail, and uh, it's because these two guys haven't played it yet, and I really wanted to see, you know, just essentially what they thought after ha- spending some time with it. And I'm pretty sure I know how Doc felt. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how Timeshares felt after a couple of hours, but uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and start with you guys. Who wants to go first? Go ahead, man. Well, I've got less time in it than you do, but if, if I had to describe it, I know we mentioned this pre-show, but it's similar to cock and ball torture, uh, <laughs> just kind of without the cock and balls. I'm enjoying it so far. Uh, I'm only about 10 hours in, but the... I, I, it's very Fallout-esque, but then there are some oddities to it that are making it harder. I'm finding that everything's killing me. My build probably sucks, and I should restart, but I'm going to continue pushing forward. Yeah. But it's, it's fucking hard. And I'm playing on the normal difficulty with the classic XP system. I thought, ah, this won't be that bad, and the first couple hours weren't that bad, and now I'm getting my shit <laughs> oh, This won't in. be that bad. Yeah, that's what you everybody know, says their know. first time in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I'm going to keep playing it. I, I haven't gotten frustrated enough to stop playing it, so I'm going to keep going through with it. <laughs> How about you, Tommy? Oh, all right. So I'm I'm going to read read the first paragraph of my review for this game, and I gave it a thumbs down because because uh, my butthole hurts. Uh, um, <laughs> imagine if the Fallout dev suddenly decided to get a hard on for Dark Souls, then forgot how to create an accessible UI. Meanwhile, they began exploring their CBT kink, but hadn't took the time to learn BDSM basics like consent and safe words. Add in a commitment to being hardcore for the sake of hardcore, the game's normal setting literally tells you, this is for hardcore gamers. Uh, and a semi-toxic community that will literally bash you for expressing any opinion that isn't, oh my god, I suck at this game, can you please help me? Semi? (laughs) (laughs) Full on fucking toxic, bro. Then a margin of error for character building that's so small that build uh, creativity is not only discouraged, it's outright frowned upon, and you start to get under rail. Am I wrong? Well, here's why all you are wrong. Um, <laughs> it's fucking, it's a fucking awesome game, um, but yes, it does get in your way a lot. And fuck the community. Uh, I'm sorry, y'all can <laughs> downvote this video as much as you want. Uh, the even the fucking designer of the game is basically an asshole. <laughs> like you should see. Like when I did the first video about it, he shared my video and like put a timestamp in it and said. Fast forward to the relevant section, and it was just the section where I was praising the game. Not talking about any of its problems, just praising the game. It's like, (laughs) it reminds me of, um, not to get political here, but it reminds me sort of like of a politician who has really a high opinion of him fucking self. And all of his, all the people that voted for him are completely sycophantic to him. That's what Stig reminds me of. It reminds me of a guy who created a thing that's very flawed, but no one wants to see any of the flaws and only wants to talk about how awesome this dude's game is. Now, it is good, but it's like you kind of have to like experiment a little bit. The, the, uh, did you guys know about the export system? Yep. I I saw it in the options, but I never clicked on it because I thought it was going to delete on my saves or something. No, man. No. It does exactly <laughs> what you think it's going to do. Even the things that you think, there's no way it's going to let me export that. Yes, it does. <laughs> it exports fucking everything. Quest everything items. Everything you've got on you. Everything you've got on you. And I actually, about... Huh. 16, 18 hours in, I was like, okay, I clearly need more levels, because I, I was, I took two feats that I shouldn't have fucking took, and now my character's gimped just past Junkyard, so I'm like, okay, well, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna export my character, go through all of this, get a few more levels, and take this one feat that I know is gonna add 
offense to my character, and and I should be able to get through it. Now it didn't work, but because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, once you take two feats, that's basically four levels that are just wasted. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're completely wasted because the the feat system is what makes you powerful, not the skills, not the attributes. It's the goddamn feats. And I've noticed the skill's not doing much for some of the stuff there. I mean, it does somewhat. I mean, if you don't keep up with the skills, then you can't hit anything, of course, and you can't mm-hmm. open locks or whatever. But it's it's really well, just the feats and the items. That's, that's and the part of the problem, though. No, like, no, no, I, the melee skill, I mainly made melee characters, and I thought, uh, logically, from every other game you come from, every other CRPG, if you're taking a skill mm-hmm. like melee, it's either going to affect your damage, your chance to hit, or both. And I don't know what the fuck this melee skill does, besides unlock feats, because I got yeah. to a point at, like, level 10 with enemies that should have been on my same level, and I was down to, like, 40% chance to hit. I've had the same issue. I My gun skill is maxed out. I think I'm like level 9 right now. Gun skill's maxed out. My chance to hit has been the same the entire time. All I've noticed is I'm locking new feats relating to, to shooting. Which, I bought the knee shot one. Hopefully that actually does something. I'm not just screwing myself over. So, like, the way I <laughs> see it, right, there, there's one thing that the game completely fucks up. And it's the progression. Because before you even create a character, the game is expecting two things out of you, right? Before you even start building a character, it's expecting you to know what items you're going to use, right? That's a huge one for me, because if you... It's like with Fallout, right? One of the biggest flaws of Fallout 1 was that certain items required a certain level of strength, and there's nowhere in character creation that tells you that. So, you could be creating a ranged character and realize that the best weapon in the game requires you to have a fucking five or six strength, and then you're like, well, I didn't fucking spec that way! You know what I mean? <laughs> because I'm supposed to be ranged! Right? Right. And right. that's the kind of shit that pisses me off. Not only does this game do that, but it also does another thing on top of that, which is the feats. So it expects you to know, first off about the weapons and ex- and that's there's no way to know that but in the game's defense the second part is mitigatable but you got to you you got to be able to navigate the UI so when you're creating a character right in the feats section you can filter out just to see the feats that are relevant to the kind of character you're creating but then the game wants you to look through all of those feats and mentally take a note that, okay, by the time I can get this skill, I need to have a 9 in perception, or I need to have a, at minimum, a 5 in strength, and shit like that. And I don't know very many fucking players that can do that and, and, and not fuck up their build. Like, I did the same thing that Doc did, where I had a build all planned out, and then, like, a few levels into it, I was like, Oh, shit! I did this wrong! And I'm and I'm already, like, I would say 20% through the game, realizing I'm going to have to wait another six levels in order to make my build viable. <laughs> that was fucking painful. Well, I started with, I started with just... Hey, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do with this game what I do with most games, and I'm gonna I'm gonna explore the game. I know nothing about it, uh, so I'm gonna start, see what what the game's throwing at me, see what I really need to take, what I don't need to take, and go from there. And I I was like 15 minutes into the game trying to fight the the rat hounds and get my shit pushed in. You know what? What did I do wrong? Oh, well, maybe I shouldn't have took that feat that lets me find hidden things because I don't really need it. Maybe I should have took something with a little more offense or a little more defense. And I I, I don't feel like that's... Maybe it's a viable way to make a game, but it's definitely not fun. So you died at the rat hounds. Like, are you talking about the rat hounds in the very beginning of the game? Yeah, when they start throwing... Not at, not at, like, the first one you run into, but when they start throwing, like, three or four at you, mm-hmm. just just right through me. Yeah. Like I was nothing. 
Yeah, I got a little bit of a... Sorry. No, go ahead. I got a little bit of a primer from some friends that, that also enjoyed the game. They're like, make sure... The only guide I got was watching your first video and then talking with friends, but they said, make sure you're putting a big emphasis on combat. And I found that the game's not been too hard yet, but it's... I can tell this is going to be kicking me in the nads pretty soon. It doesn't well, start... Form. It doesn't start kicking you in the nuts, though, until you start fighting human enemies. Well, and, and that's the thing, is I'm... Right past the junkyard. I yeah. just finished up the Silent Island or whatever it was. With the oh, doppelganger yeah, and all that. fuck that area. That area is Yeah, that, that, that was... Yeah, that was painful. That was painful. Yeah. My first death was killing myself with an exploding barrel by accident. Um, I knifed <laughs> it. I thought I was interacting with it, and then I stabbed it and blew myself up and, and had to reset. Well, the, <laughs> I think what most people end up doing, and, and why they end up where I am, where I'm like, no, nope, nope, I will never play this game again. It's because they go to the forums and they read things like, and I quote, maybe you should have downloaded a torrent first if you wasn't going to take the time to learn what we're going to teach you. <laughs> like, really? That's so really? goddamn pretentious. Yeah. And here's here's what kills me. I went there to ask a question because I took the, the psionics, and I think psionics are a great, great, like, metaphor for this entire game. Like, it's... It's super powerful. It's super powerful if you get into it and use it right, but it's so ball-bustingly limited and hard to get into that you might as well not waste your time. Okay. But I, but th to be fair though, if you if you look into the feats, right? So y here's the one thing. Like when you go to their forums and you want to look up like psi builds and shit, right? There's one feat that you absolutely have to get in order to make your shit viable at all. And it's premeditation. If you don't have premeditation, your build is wrong. <laughs> like, it's just plain wrong, right? But then on top of that, there's other shit like Locust of Control. Locust of Control. Which is like, it makes all of your single target mind control spells AoE. That's super fucking powerful. But not only does it do that, but it makes you immune to all mind control effects. For however long that shit lasts, it is like three turns, right? And then you start combining it with other shit, right? Like uh, certain temporal abilities will give you a shorter cooldown on those kinds of abilities, so you can start to use them like every two rounds as opposed to every. Da -da -da. And and when you do that, you start to realize like the system just starts to open up slowly, but it takes so fucking long to get there that if you're not building your character 100% the way it needs to be built by the time you get there you're going to be like oh fuck fuck I need one more point in this shit and I gotta wait four fucking levels to do it yeah but then the game gets in its own way with stupid stuff so like mm -hmm. like you take the, the psionic barrier where you can build a wall and funnel them mm-hmm but the game doesn't do, like, the Fallout, the normal CRPG thing where, like, the walls around your view range come down so you can see where the tiles are. So you put up a wall thinking, or at least I did, put up a wall thinking I've blocked off an area and I've trapped this area. So they're going to have to either attack the wall or come all the fucking way around. <laughs> no, they just went through that hole where I couldn't <laughs> see. Like, yeah. what? Um, Why? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, is shit, there is shit like that where it's just like you know you just can't understand why like if they take the roof off of buildings when you enter them why they can't take the wall down you know what not I mean? even the whole thing just in your view range would be perfect or just have like you know the circle around you where you mm -hmm. are like it didn't fall out where it's visible around you it's mm -hmm. there's all kinds of ways to do it but they're I don't know. I guess maybe he thought it would make the game harder. <laughs> well, that, that's why I think it would be hard to be hard. Like, just a commitment yeah. to being hard for no reason. And I, you see this a lot in a lot of games, and this is a, a catch-all phrase, but Slav jank. We lovingly use the phrase Slav jank. And this game is Slav jank. It's enjoyable Slav jank. It's Slav jank that hurts you, too. It's kind of like eating a sandwich that's delicious but filled with glass. 
Um, but it's still slob chain. Like, you know, Stalker is a fun game, but it's really bad. But you can make it better. And then there's like really high end slob chain. Wow, like that was a fucking game. spicy hot take right there. Stalker. So, okay. Stalker is good, Side but note. it's a bad game. So Stalker is great when you do things to fix the game because none of the games were finished. But that's a side note. That's for another podcast. Stalker is great if it was finished. And well, the I definitely. Finished it. I want to look at Anomaly because uh, obviously. Oh, Anomaly is like, fantastic. Yeah, it's fantastic. And that's what I hear. It's, I haven't actually played the third game in the series, but like from what I understand, I'm Call of Pripyat is my favorite. Actually, I would like I, what I heard people say is it's Call of Pripyat with everything. They, so they took like the engine shit. that was slightly modified to make it run better. The game's a little bit more stable. They added in all of the areas that are one giant map, more weapons, more weapon variety. The animations aren't flopped to be left-handed. That's a side note, but that's an experience where, like, people say that you have to mod certain games to enjoy them. Stalker is one where I think vanilla, it is miserable. And not fun misery, it's just bad misery. I gotta but, disagree with you, man. I'll get for it. I'm fine with it. I like it. That. I like it, but it's like when we start getting into shit like um like the second one, Clear Skies, man. Fuck that game. So yes. fuck that game so hard. Because it it's not just that the aiming is shit and they put you up against the fucking bandits like right away. They don't even give you a chance to really understand anything that's going on or, like, mm -hmm. stock up on ammo. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, you run out of ammo halfway through the goddamn bandit camps. <laughs> I mean, you got nothing but a fucking knife left. <laughs> it's, But it also, it also managed to fuck up the zeroing on, like, two of the guns in the mm -hmm. game. And they just well, so I happen to be the... Up. And they just so happen to be the guns you fucking start with, so they're not even yep. zeroed properly. Yep, yep. <laughs> fucking bullets that always drift upward from the site it's like mm -hmm. i'm trying to land headshots because that's the most mm -hmm. appropriate way to play. and there's no way you can land them because the zeroing is off mm -hmm. so, it's, I'm so, in, so it makes it so you, that much harder to do anything in that game so you be to tell me fuck that game because it's hard and kind of broken <laughs> but i love under rail because it's hard and kind of broken i think under rail is more finished than at you any it is of not broken yeah like what times there's just it's not broken that's the difference it's, yeah like Stalker's just not finished <laughs> yeah clear skies is like clearly fucking broken Ship it. <laughs> it's clearly broken not fun in any yep. any stretch of the imagination. It doesn't start to get fun until you start modding the weapons. And to make them this, work. this game has fun in it, mm -hmm. but it expects a lot of the player. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, you thought you were just going to fucking buy this game and have fun? Who the fuck you think you are? <laughs> it yes. comes to you with an attitude. It it reminds me of, like, imagine having a car that's really enjoyable to drive, but it's a manual transmission and you have 38 gears. <laughs> it's kind of like that. And the people who have mastered all, like, you know, like like the Rubik's Cube of gears for the car are like, wait, you, wait you're not good? Well, fuck off and go play something easier. And it's like, come on, come on. There's got to be a, a somewhere in between there. <laughs> good scrub. Do it. Do it. Commit. <laughs> Listen, Listen, what if I didn't bring game. my own lube to this game? What what if I didn't bring my own lube to this game? What what about that? What if I just wanted to enjoy the story? You wouldn't have a good time. I don't think exactly. I don't know if that's possible. Like have any of us played on the easiest difficulty? Yeah, so obviously I'm not. Okay. Yeah. Is it is it any more enjoyable for someone who just wants to I mean, take in It doubles um, your stuff? health. It doubles okay, your health, but then. it's just like you gotta think like, okay, the combat's hard, right? So what do I do? Mm -hmm. Right? Naturally you might start putting attribute points in the constitution right you might try to max out whatever attribute is going to be responsible for you to hit harder and more often right and uh you'll probably have fun with that right you, you know if you got high enough strength to use the metal armor you'll shrug off most of the damage and you get through the game like but the thing that people miss quite often because i think that triple a games like i i said in a review i think they have fucking completely fucked us over as game playing public, right? Because the games that they put out <clears throat> are not hard. Okay? They're not hard for good reasons. They're hard for arbitrary reasons. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, uh, the enemy has... <coughs> the enemy has 50% more health and you do 50% less damage. Oh, great. Yep. Cool. This game's like, by default, 
you are just as dangerous as the enemy. An enemy is on an even playing field with you. The problem is, is that there's four enemies on the screen at once. Mm -hmm. How the fuck are you going to, what are you going to do about that, right? Mm -hmm. And you've got all the same tools to your, at your disposal as they do. The thing you have to think about, and the game expects this of you, which is impossible to expect of somebody when they first play it, is like, who engages first? How do you survive the engagement when you don't get your turn first? Especially when an enemy can kill you turn one. How do you do that? Right? And that's the, the shit that is not intuitive to people. But it's like, it's what I like the most about the game. Because it's like you could do that in one of a couple of different ways, right? You can use stealth. Or you could just put all of your points into agility. And just every single fight, get initiative first, and always mm-hmm. start the engagement with a stun or an AOE stun or something. Like, incapacitate with flashbangs, or a uh, locus of control with uh, some mind control shit, and then fear them, or light them on fire with a fucking Molotov round one. That fucking works great, especially when they're on fire. I, mm-hmm. And... And you could get feats that make it easier for you to do the things that you want to do. The thing that everybody sleeps on, and this is what I mean about the AAA game design, is the crafting. Everybody sleeps on that shit. Who here took crafting? You did? Did you use it? (laughs) Once I got it up high enough, so I I Mm. will say it's pretty pretty powerful. Once I... Mm. I took, like, I, I was using just the basic-ass spear, because my, my most successful build was a spear build. I was using just Which a is a meta build, one. actually. I was using a basic-ass one, and I ended up skipping mm-hmm. the points to take throw. Would throw in, uh, God, what is it called? It, it's the spear ability that lets you automatically crit if it hits, and you have your regular hit chance. So I, I skipped taking those because, like I said, I took my first two abilities and was like, mm, I'm going to just do whatever. Um, once I got to the point where I could craft a spear, it almost tripled my damage. Almost. Yeah. Just out of nowhere. And there was no spear around in any of the towns I went to that can compete with the crafted one I built. And, then and, and that's the thing about it, <laughs> is that that is always the case. And in AAA games, that is never the fucking case. Mm-hmm. Crafting sucks. It it's just it allows you to not have to buy the exact same fucking weapon from a vendor. Oh, so I'm just saving a couple of bucks here and there. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. This shit actually yeah. changes the goddamn game. Like mm-hmm. when there, I remember there was a point where. I was working with my temporal monk, which is this monk that they just keep punching, just keeps punching and never, never stops. Like, he, he gains movement points when he hits, and then he converts those movement points to action points, and then he does it again, and again, and again, and again. It's fucking stupid. And it was meant to be played that way. And there's a cra- There's one crafted item called Tabby Boots that you just absolutely need because they reduce the action point cost of your melee, <laughs> right? So you, in one round, you can end up attacking like 10 to 15 more times wow. just because of these boots, right? It's super good. And you can craft them very early on. You just have to know like what skins do I need, what soul like, all that stuff and then like, then there's little things you could do like with grenades I didn't realize that at level basically level 1 you can craft a level 4 grenade so mark 4 grenade which is like a level 20 grenade by the way Mm -hmm. at level (laughs) 1 so it's the equivalent of like being a level 18 Psy user at level 1 with your throw ability. Because you do 90 to 180 damage base with the uh, incendiaries. 
And then with the actual grenade grenades, it's even higher than that. So the, the game throws a lot of tools at you, but I feel like those tools are so buried and obscure that it just most people most people aren't gonna take the time or have the patience to use them. I don't even. I put twenty four hours into the game, and I don't want to take the time to build. A build that I know, like, I know that if I took a sword build and built it out the way I'm building out my spear user, I could just demolish stuff. But I don't want to do it halfway out of spite, because I don't want to get the give the game the satisfaction of playing it anymore. <laughs> it, it kind of feels like playing a and d session with a DM that's, like, really unhappy and didn't sleep enough. <laughs> you know, it's like there's always too many enemies. You're always getting, like, you know, rock fall. You know, they're always failing checks. <laughs> okay, I gotta, I gotta know. Why do you not like it? Like, what was the moment that you were just like, okay, fuck this game. <laughs> I'm not doing this anymore. Fuck this game. The initial moment was with my third of six builds, where I decided I wanted to. I, I like the pistols. I'd been through far enough that I killed some guy. That had this like really powerful um, energy pistol on it. And I was like, you know, I want to try that. I want to try a build with that. <laughs> so I built a new build, took the initial pistol that you get, and could not for 10 fucking minutes figure out how to reload this pistol once I ran out of bullets. 10 minutes. Come to find out, you just, you either go into your inventory and you manually right click, or. There's a obscure shift plus something button yes. that will do it for you. No, you do shift. <laughs> shift one. At, and then you hit the, yeah, you hit the hit icon. The one at, at no point is any of this explained to you. At no point does it make, like, every game I've played, you're carrying a weapon and there's a little button that says, even in Fallout, there's a button that says reload. Hey, I'm going to reload. I've got the ammo. Why? This is complicated for no other reason than to be complicated. It, now, I don't that, want to sound like an that asshole here. Point. Did, did you look at the controls menu before you started playing the game? <laughs> oh, I, I, I did that. I did that. That's what I do. Okay, so I want to slow down. Hear me out here. Hear me out here. And y'all can call me a plebeian here. I'm a console gamer. I use a PC for a lot of older stuff, but I'm not predominantly playing PC. So whenever I hop into any game, even if it's something really simple that everybody's played, like any first-person shooter, I always look at the controls because inevitably I will go to hit one button to pull my inventory and it'll delete my save. You know, so I always read the controls and I'm like, oh, I have to shift and control open up totally separate menus for your items and abilities. But if you hold shift and you can just mouse click on the reload button to reload different ammo into your gun. Mm -hmm. So... The UI has not been a concern for me so far. I'm, it, you know, I'm used to some. Every some other game lives. you play, you can WASD to move the camera around, <laughs> and if this one doesn't do that because, ugh, well, it's more hardcore if I make you take your hand off the mouse or switch over to your other fucking hand and use the arrow keys. Because fuck you, guy. You can rebind the keys, my dude. You can, you know. I can, but why should I? <laughs> because you're complaining about it that's why uh, that's, a, that's my point you why mean I gotta do click on a man everybody, everybody does this every other game does this and you're like nah fuck the player we know they're coming in trained to use the keyboard like this we're gonna fuck them up <laughs> we're gonna fuck them up why not so I understand the reason that, they don't do agree. that by default, if I understand it correctly, the reason they don't do that by default is that Q, W, E, R, and T are your utilities. So that's why they don't bind this shit there by default. It's so mm -hmm. that you can like quick key your utility slots, you know, the, like the two to four mm -hmm. slots and shit over on the side. Um, and that's the reason they don't do that. But but I will admit. The UI is obtuse as shit. It's obtuse as shit. It hides things where things that shouldn't be hidden. Like when I came back to this game, I I guess I took like maybe a half a year off of it, right? 
Mm -hmm. Something like that. I came back to it, and, and I couldn't figure out how to reload the weapon without having the fucking ammo put on the fucking hotbar. You know what I mean? And then I was like, oh, it's shift, right. Okay. <coughs> so I get it. It's, it's obtuse as shit for no reason, but... I think the point where I almost gave up was when I finally gave in and was like, okay, I'm gonna go find a build, and I'm gonna find a build that I like, <clears throat> that I'm super happy with, and then I got to, like, level 8, and by then I was supposed to have build viability, right? So I've been struggling the whole time to get to this point. And I got there, and I realized that I put a point into dexterity instead of agility, and I was like, oh, great, I gotta wait until six levels from now in order to make this build viable. Fuck. <laughs> right? And I wanted to just fucking quit. At that point, I just wanted to quit. But then I went to the arena, and that's when the shit, like, opened up. Because I got to the arena, and I could not figure out how to kill this one guy. This one dude is giving me such a hard fucking time. So I went around town, like, looking for items that I could use against him, and I, and I found the incapacitate, like, flashbangs. And I was like, wait a minute. So if I hit him with a stun... And then I hit him with an incapacitate, wait two rounds for my shit to come off a cooldown, and by the time he's ready to do that, I can hit him with a stun again, and just keep fucking stun locking him, and in between that, when I stun, that's when I attack, I let him sit and incapacitate, and then I use this temporal ability to shorten my cooldowns, and do it all over again. And then get spec ops so I could throw more flashbangs and da 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 And that's when shit started to make sense. But it was like, that, that revelation could have came at the beginning of the game if the game started in a, in a place where it taught you how to play the game. It's like I was saying with the uh, Deus Ex video where they start you off with all your abilities and then they take them away, right? That's the perfect way to train a player in a game like this. So that if there's some sort of choice that the player needs to make, it's better for them to know what those abilities do before, you know. Like, they could have started you off at, like, level 20 and made you pick all your skills all the way up to level 20 and then take you through that gauntlet <coughs> and then show you, like... Yeah, you can't get through... If you can't get through these fights, your build's not viable. They could have done that first thing. Or they could have had a section where you play the arena, create a level 20 character, play the arena, right? And if you're able to get through it, then you know your build's viable. They could have just as easily done that shit, yeah. but they just didn't. It's like the game doesn't want to help you. <laughs> While you're saying that, I'm thinking of... You know the, the beginning of System Shock 2? I'm thinking like that, you know, where not quite just three options or however many options you have in System Shock 2, but like that, where it's the same opening to this game. But yeah, well, you're level 20, here's all the abilities, choose them, and then see if it works for varying scenarios. Yeah, I mean, but, uh, you know. I, I, like the, I like the freedom. I gotta fucking fix this shit. Good eye, <laughs> uh, So, I like the, the way that the system is so open and there's so much choice. I wouldn't want anything to happen there, but I want him, I, if he does another expansion, I want him to add an option to test your viability of your build, like enter the arena, right? Like the, the you know, when Witcher 2 had the arena and you went through all of that and, you, and it was basically a way to test your build viability before you actually got in the game, that, give me that. That way, no stakes. I don't have to play through that fucking story again for the fucking 30th time. Just, there's no stakes. You go in, you test your shit, and then as you're going along, you're learning new things about it, and then when you're ready to play, you can play. There's, there's a much simpler answer to this problem. Much, much simpler. Stop being a dick and let your players respec. That, yeah. 
Whatever. If you get <laughs> if you get six to ten to twenty, you know, twenty hours into the game, and you suddenly realize you suddenly hit a wall and you can't do anything, mm, something's wrong with your build. Maybe it's time to reload an earlier save and respec. Yeah. And that's the point where yesterday, fucking yesterday, I ran into this problem. And I realized my build is the problem, that I can't just keep these two extra feats that I don't need in my build because it's completely boned me. I went to I went to take care of the 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 beetle things that shoot the poison arrows at you, the the burglars. Went to take care of those. Spent all my money on extra stuff, put down dozens of traps, made these elaborate, you know, this elaborate like maze for the burrowers to get through once I got in the cave so they didn't just like I have a melee build in their range it, it's terrible to fight but you get through it and then I come out mm -hmm. and the mine area has respawned with burrowers and I can't do anything there's no point at, at, that I can take care of this and it's like okay well I need to change my character how do I do this fuck you buddy start over try again Nope, yep. nope, I'm done. Yeah, that's where the game loses people. And I honestly don't think Stig gives a shit. <laughs> because when you when you look at his response to some people, there was this one, I, I took a screenshot of it because it was so perfect. <laughs> <clears throat> There's a guy who was just like, I, I feel so helpless right now because I can't figure out how to move forward. I really like this game. And I really want to learn how to play it, but I just, I don't know what to do. And Stig was like, well, if you can't figure this out, then maybe this isn't the game for you. What the fuck, dude? You're selling this shit for money, son. What the fuck are you saying? <laughs> what gets me, what gets me about that stuff is like your entire setting, like, okay, you're up on your high horse. But your entire setting is ripping off a combination of Metro and Fallout. And it's super fucking obvious. Nobody's saying anything about that. But you're up there going, ugh, ugh, this is my game. You'll play it the way I want you to. And you'll I, like it. I've been describing the environment it literally as that to people who haven't touched it. I'm like, it's kind of like if you never left the caves in the beginning of Fallout 1 and it was the entire game. It's kind of like that. With some more warehouses. Well, like, jump town. <laughs> if you played Metro Exodus, it's the entire game is literally the first 15 minutes of Metro Exodus. Just expanded out into a whole game. Like, even the Rat Hounds are literally there. They're there. Well, They're in Metro no, technically speaking, Exodus came out four years after Underrail did. But, but Metro... Metro's been yeah, out but Metro, yeah, how long? I know, I know. I, I'm not disagreeing with that, I'm just saying that specific example. But well, yeah, no, this, this was my first game in the series, so excuse me for coming, coming into this late. But I, I'm going <laughs> to put that was advocate here. Slav Jank. Slav, again, Slav Jank. This is where the man lives. I don't, you know? like, I don't think it's Slav Jank, because that shit seems to like, yeah. come by accident. And this doesn't seem like an accident. I mean, you can, you can have calculated slop jank, can't you? I, I mean, I guess. <laughs> it kind of is anti anti antithetical, antithetical? To what, antithetical to what jank means, you know? It's just the system doesn't work the way it should. I, I guess so. Right, but I mean... Well, I, I was going to say, I think some games make too much of a commitment to one theme. So, like, Outward, if, if you guys have ever played Outward, it's a perfect example of this outwards commitment to you are a normal person and you're going to go out and explore these things takes over the entire game. There's nothing in the game except going one place, going into a cave and seeing what's in that cave and then going back. They don't even bother to populate the overworld, which is what you can call most of the maps in that with anything remotely interesting or anything to keep a player's attention. And it seems like, under rail is committed to just ass raping you that that's the theme of the game constant <laughs> unmitigated booty stuff okay it, you is that the steam review like title no <laughs> like, <laughs> pure unadulterated <laughs> booty but stuff. no like 
it, yeah. it seems like they took this idea that hey, I want to make it. I I want to make a CRPG and I want to make it hard. Like I want to make this Dark Souls hard. And instead of looking at things that would like make it a little more, not even a lot, but a little more accessible to normal people, they're like, nope, I'm not doing that. Not at all. This needs to be hard. This is only for hardcore gamers. Hardcore, I don't know, CBT enthusiasts. <laughs> okay. I, mean, I, I don't. I don't know. I. I think that. I don't know. I don't, I don't get the Dark Souls reference. Um. I feel like what the guy tried to do was like, what if CRPGs are were hard? Right? Because let's face it. CRPGs aren't hard, man. I've I've never played one that was hard. Have any of you? I'm sure I have. Name uh, one. I'm sure they've been. <laughs> I, like I thought Fallout Two was hard. Like I well, really did. It was hard for me when I first started playing. I mean, um, okay, yeah. I, I mean, you can basically run away from everything in that game, and mm -hmm. but you try to do that shit in Underrail and. It's like oh, you would just get oh. you get raped. Yeah, it's like it, yeah. <laughs> it's almost as if Stig looked at Fallout and said, "What if Fallout but hard? Like, what if I took all of the shit I didn't like about Fallout and I fixed them, and or fixed them, <laughs> right? Mm. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I don't like that you can run away from every enemy. I'm gonna fix that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't like that." the combat is very simple and it's a battle of attrition and whoever has the most healing items wins. I'm going to fix that. Right. Um, and it, it seems like I don't really like it that you can only use your stun once and then it's on cooldown for five turns. I'm going to fix that. All of that kind of shit is, it, it seems like him fixing perceived problems. Like, if there's one thing I can say about Underrail is that it's definitely a person with a vision for how he would like to see games. And that's super fucking refreshing to me. That's why I like it, because it's like I actually had to learn a different way of playing games. And now that I play other games, I'm trying to find some of those similar connections from over here using some of the things that I learned about playing this guy's game on these games that aren't necessarily anywhere near as hard. I like that about the game because it, while it is absolutely discouraging at times, like if I hadn't been making that video for the game and I, I didn't do it for a living, I'm pretty sure I, was, I said that in the video too. Like if I hadn't been being paid to do it, I would not have put myself through that because it was definitely something I had to put myself through. Well, that's, well, I, that's where the dark souls reference comes from. It's like bleeding edge precision hard. Like you have almost no margin of error. You have to, you have to learn, for example, the bosses, you have to learn mm -hmm. what they're doing, their movement patterns, and you have to mm -hmm. keep trying. Mm -hmm. But I don't think a single-mindedness on the concept of hard to the detriment of all else makes a fun game. Well, let me be honest. The game doesn't really set the best first impressions either. Because the first impressions of the game is like, oh, combat's fucking simple. You just stay away from the enemy and everything's good. Yeah, you just run away, shoot, yeah, bing, shoot, bing, bing. Yep. shoot, run away, bing, bing, mm -hmm. run away. You know, okay, great. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. And then the story in the beginning is boring. There's not much going on. You see well, fetch just, quests. Yeah, you're doing fetch quests for people that aren't all that important. There's no stakes whatsoever, right? Then when you finish all of that and faceless invade and everything, then it starts to pique your cur your curiosity, but then it's just like, "Oh, don't worry about that. <laughs> you won't get to that until much later in the game." And it's like it doesn't try to grab your attention but when it does eventually grab your attention i really enjoyed it like the story the gameplay everything about it but that literally took like 
50 hours of me retrying, retrying, remaking characters. And then it's like legitimately like 12 hours into the game when you start dealing with the chorts, the shortest, um, whatever cult or whatever the hell it is. When you start dealing with that shit, that's when the game starts to become like, oh wow, this is fucking cool. But it takes so goddamn long to get there. You know what I mean? It's like, it's the game just, like you said, it's like the game feels like it's trying to keep people out. Mm -hmm. Like the game is a gatekeeper to its own fun. It truly is. It truly is. I mean, there's plenty of games that are like that, but this one is, seems so extreme, right? Yeah, because we've been hard. trained. We've been trained pretty hard to like mm -hmm. that. Um, I don't know what you would call it. Like the uh, well, when it, you enter into the flow state, right? It's because yeah. you're completely destroying this fucking game. Right, you exit out of the flow state when you get your ass kicked, and you're like, "Oh fuck, what do I do?" Right, but it's like most games are designed like that to never get in your way and just allow you to experience the whole thing from beginning to end. And then when you come up to a game like this, where it's just like, "Nah, you gotta read," and you got about another eight hours of reading shit about the game <laughs> before you can enjoy this. Okay, go do your homework and then come back. <laughs> All right, but that commitment, that single-minded commitment to being hard and to, you know, like you said, fixing the things that they thought was wrong for a CRPG can be done better and can be done in a way that's fun. Well, As a King, Kingdom Come Deliverance. That's what I was, I was thinking of. That was what I was thinking of here. That is, that is a game that, for all intents and purposes, you are just... <laughs> somebody and everybody can do what you do and a lot of times they can do it better and for the first i don't know 10 15 hours of the game everybody does do it better yeah so there's ways to go about making your game hard and either semi accessible or at least fun enough to make you go okay well this is what i'm bad at and if i practice this or if i do this more and learn about this i get better but there's no reward in Underrail for getting better. You just move into an area with progressively more harder enemies, more harder, uh, more mm. enemies with larger dongs and less lube. More of them, I think, is the thing. There's more. Enemies. <laughs> well, okay, yeah, sort of. Um, I don't think there's anything more satisfying that I've played in twenty years. Then entering into a room that has 15 people in it, 15, and finding out a way of killing every single person in there without taking a single hit. And you can do that in Underrail. It's, it's, it's a different kind of heart, right? Because all of that shit that got me to that point where I could take out that whole room full of people... It was a combination of all of the things that I learned up to that point from all the numerous restarts, right? Like, I remember, here's a good way of putting it. Okay, here's a good way of putting it. Your first playthrough, you might walk away from it and discover, oh shit, traps are really fucking useful. Okay, okay. I'm gonna take traps on the next game that I restart, and I'm gonna restart and do traps, right? So then you start doing traps, and then you're like, you know what? It's good, but I can't set the traps up in a position because I can't stealth. And my agility's really low, so I don't get the initiative that I need. And by the time I'm ready to set up traps, I'm already in combat and I'm fucked, right? I'm going to take stealth and agility this time around, right? And then you do that. And then each time you play through the game, you learn a little something new. And then you take that knowledge from that playthrough over to this, right? It's like, my monk is not supposed to do traps. He's not supposed to be stealth. But he is traps, and he will stealth. Because those are two really good abilities, in my opinion. And I got really good at using them to my advantage. Right? So it's like, every time you play, you learn just a little bit more new... And then you bring that into your next playthrough, and then your next playthrough, until you have a godlike 
entity that is blowing through whole rooms full of fucking people without taking damage. Because the simple fact is, is like, when you get your character to that point, you don't need constitution because you're like, I know exactly how to take out a room full of ten people without getting hit. I don't need this, this, or this. So now I can maximize the potential of that character. That's the thing I really like about it. Like, it plays like an MMO if an MMO was complicated. Does that make think, sense? Though, it does, but I think you're confusing the satisfaction of overcoming a challenge with an overall fun experience. An overall good experience. Um, I think a good example of this for me is like, I had satisfying moments in this game. I can't I can't even lie. There are satisfying moments. There's there's a guy north of Camp Hawthor, whatever it's called, that is invisible, and if you walk in his little area, he comes out of stealth, knifing you, stun locks you, and knifes you to death. Mm -hmm. I'm wearing full metal armor and I've got, you know, I've got the spear, so I've got guard. Half the mm -hmm. time I can block up to like twenty points of damage just for free. Dude killed me every single time. So, so, I go up there. I know where he is now because I've died to him like eight times. I throw a couple of Molotovs before combat even starts. Just throw them and then put up my little barrier and let him fucking fry. Fuck that guy. Yeah. Eventually, I beat him. Of course, that's satisfying. But why do I need to die so much? just to find out that I can do that. A, and B, is it fun to die that much? See, that that's another design flaw that I could point out, right? So, I, how far have you gotten in timeshares? Not as far as y'all. Like, so I'm just past the junkyard. But I would love I, to revisit this if you ever go back to it and play it some more. Oh, whoa, I'm, I'm not stopping now. I'm okay. going to continue playing it. Yeah, we gotta re, We gotta revisit this shit if you guys continue well, to play. I'm happy to. Because that, that <laughs> stealthing shit, okay, that's why detection is, there. every single stat in this game is important for one reason or another. And to not have it is to be a gap in your defenses that can kill you, right? And But there is a way to boost all of those stats to a level where you can use them but it requires so much information on your part to go out and like find that no one aside from people like me are going to do that because they don't get obsessed with something and they're not like sitting in bed trying to sleep they're like this that fucking god damn it and just mentally just fucking driving themselves crazy going you motherfucker you're not gonna fucking win i'm gonna fucking get you tomorrow you motherfucker i'm not gonna let you win there's not a whole lot of people like that they can just let this shit go you know what i mean they don't have a weird obsessive fucking brain like i do and that's the problem with the game is that like stealth for instance there's a point in the game where you run into those things called stalkers. Fuck those things. There is no universe in which those things should have fucking exist in a game. They Here's what they do. They stealth, right? Mm. But there's a form of stealth that they do that no matter what you do, you cannot see them, right? A really cool system in the game is this system where if you're in shadow and the enemy is in light, they have a harder time seeing you and can't hit you, right? Because that's how the mm -hmm. eye works. If you're standing in a light area, your pupils are, are very, very small. Can't take in light from dark areas, right? So they can't see you, so they take a massive penalty to accuracy while you get a bonus. Because they're bright <laughs> right in front mm -hmm. of you great fucking system right and you can totally fuck somebody up by throwing a bright object into the shadow like a flare where now not only are you able to hit them better but they take a penalty because now their eyes are blown the fuck out right okay <laughs> knowing that when stalkers come they live in shadows right 
So they're mm -hmm. only in the dark places. If you throw a flare where one of them is, you're supposed to be able to see them. But not if they're in the ceiling. If they're in the ceiling, you're fucked. How do you know they're in the ceiling? You fucking don't! <laughs> you don't know until they drop down, paralyze you with some poison, and then go back up into the ceiling where you can't fucking see them. And, you f and then you're supposed to go find them. Because they're usually hiding somewhere in the level. And then you gotta throw a flare to find them. And then maybe you might get to hit them. But what they keep doing is just dropping down from the ceiling, hitting you, paralyzing you, going back up. And they just keep doing that. Fuck those things, man. Fuck Bigger those dumb. things. Less lube. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck those things. It's a good analogy. It's a good analogy. It just shouldn't exist. It's like systems like that shouldn't exist without the player being painfully aware that they exist. Like, getting killed by that guy is supposed to teach you that sometimes you need a light source, right? And that's fine, right? But the light sources do not guarantee that you're going to see these people. Is see, and that's where I would say, that's where I would say the game, again, trips over itself because your flare the dis item description on your flare says it automatically renders anyone in stealth visible right so if you've thrown it in their it area doesn't. it absolutely do that it and absolutely it, you, doesn't yeah that's what i'm saying man yeah it tells you things that aren't true it gaslights you <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it moves around the and furniture it, in your house and then tells you, no, it's always been this way. What are you talking about? The same way. Yeah. There are ways to games, like, uh, the example I'll use is one that's overdone, but like Half-Life and Half-Life 2, the barnacles. You always see someone run into a barnacle or a barrel roll into one that, you know, pulls it up and you see, okay, I need to look up. This is a game that can't really do that. It's like, okay, you've been killed by this thing. You'll get killed by it three more times to figure out how to make it killed by it. Which is, I understand that, but there, I mean, there are better ways to execute that, but like, yeah, there are. There yeah. are the ways that you just explained it. Like, exactly. if we exactly. walk into a room and the first time we see a stalker is we see it killing somebody that way. It right? comes down, kills someone, and goes back up. There you go. That's all you okay. need. And then we see somebody killing it, and we learn from, from watching them do it. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. that's how you do it? Cool, got it. Yep. But, <laughs> you know. No. But this in is the meantime, game that wants to hurt you. It's a game the that game, severely lacks user experience testing. And just it's an abusive way. relationship. Yeah. Hey, there was one user that tested it. He also <laughs> just happened to make it, okay? Yeah. <laughs> it's, the game's an abusive relationship. The game beats you, tells you it's your fault, and then tells you to go back to yeah. playing it. Yeah. If you know what's good for you. If you didn't <laughs> open your mouth up so much, I wouldn't have to hit it. <laughs> I do this because I love you. <laughs> <laughs> listen listen i know you just got your shit pushed in that's what's supposed to happen you deserve this try again start all the way over i know you're 20 hours in just start over. You're that's the thing that pisses me off the most it's the thing that like there's no excuse for it like the excuse that people give you is that oh you know if you had a respec option then you'd get the level 20 and then you'd respec yourself after you've like crafted all the best items in the fucking game. Then you'd respec yourself and throw all of your fucking points into something else. And then get rid of all of your crafting feats and all that shit. Okay, fair. Fair fucking point. Then, how about this? <laughs> how about, like in Path of Exile... You give us a limited number of resources that we can use to respec parts of our character we don't like. That fair? Mm -hmm. Can you do that? Yeah. You know? There's like ways to handle this shit where you can't you don't have to necessarily 100% destroy the balance of your game. If you're so worried or about crafting, make it so that crafting feats can't be respec. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Or even just Feats themselves. Hey, listen, you can respect. Feats are what fuck you feats. up the most, though. You, that's you what take I'm a saying. feat you can... and you're like, oh man, this is a useless ass feat for this. And then you're like, fuck, I wish I could respect this. 
Yeah, just just your feats. Hey, listen, you put your skill points in, you're stuck with them forever. So if you put 200 points into crafting, you better hope that they have crafting somewhere down there and that'll let you get through the game. But, you know, your feats, let's respect those. Okay. You've taken a few bad feats. You can now make a, vi a viable build. You can make it a separate option when you start the game. Have like a toggle, you know, respec the ability to respec at a certain point turned on or off. Yeah, he would you call know? you know and what people who want it. You know what Stig would call that? He'd call that retard mood. I he, he I'd seems be fine with that. He seems like the type <laughs> of guy who would do that. He'd be like I mean for babies only or some yeah. shit. Yeah. I don't you see my thing is I like options in games when you start the game, right? This is a terrible example, but it's a horrible game. Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Game was fucking terrible when it came out, it's still bad now. <clears throat> but what I like is that when you boot up the game, it lets you pick like forty different options so that you can make it as immersive or least immersive you want. You want your HUD to be full of everything, your weapons and your ammo and your mini map, all that it's all there. You can turn it all off. You can have it set that, you know, like when you reload, if you had leftover ammunition in the magazine, it's gone. And this is a game that's like, give me 400 options when I'm making, you know, starting the game. And then if people want to make fun of me on the internet, I don't care, right? Mm -hmm. So. Because yeah, I'm know. playing the fucking game, so I can enjoy it. Well, that's the thing, is that if they want to have a mode for the, the real fans of Underrail, you know, to do that, then they can keep playing it that way. But if for people, like, to get more people into it. I I, that's the thing, like, I, I feel like this, this developer is the only developer I've ever seen who hates money. Like, like New Blood, New Blood says they hate money. You know, they got the website, uh, we hate money dot money or some shit like that. And uh, I think Stig legitimately does, because like it's a, uh, it's like a seven out of ten for me, currently. But there's a nine out of ten there, buried deep down inside that game, that all that he would need to do is just teach people effectively how to play the game and so much of that comes down to game design knowledge just understanding game design you know like you could do the whole like oh, this skill does this shit up on the screen or you could show the person in another way or you could design scenarios where if they don't learn this thing that they gotta learn they can't move forward you know, gating off progression by teaching people shit. Like, it's just, it's like game design one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> I think something simple, like, just telling you, just telling you when you put your, your points into attributes, <laughs> what stats are derived from that. Like, would go a long way to taking people and going, hey, listen, this is, this is what this is gonna do. This is what happens when, if you put if you put an extra point in the strength, you get, I don't know, three more mechanical damage. Oh, you Something mean like the, the derived stats that aren't skills, yeah. That's yeah. the thing that it doesn't do very well. I think... I'm not sure. I'm not sure if you hover over the this, uh, this stat if it doesn't tell you. I, mean, I know, I know that for skills it tells you the associated ones, right? And it tells you what it'll affect and right. increase. Yeah, there's a description in there for it. But, like, so dex and agility, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase both of them, and they affect the way your character moves. But which one affects your action points? Uh, Does anybody know right off the mm, Hold on. That's my point. And dexterity, I think? Dexterity, 100%. I actually looked this up before I wrote that Steam review. Dexterity affects your movement points. Mm -hmm. Agility, nothing, nothing affects your action points. No, um, you get, the only you get thing... fifty, and that's it. Yeah, unless the... you're taking adrenaline shots or you're doing feet stuff. Right? right. Yeah, you can take adrenaline to get more action points. Um, you can actually get more action points and movement points by using a psionic ability, but like you have a hard cap, and there's only drugs that can raise that high cap. That uh that cap or you can replenish them through different means so like there's a temporal b ability that gives you like i want to say 20 action points and 30 movement points when you use it and it has a cooldown of like three to four turns 
and then you use premeditation to cast that and then you take those those points use them to gain more movement points then use blitz to get more action points and it just you slowly get to the point where you no longer have action points there's all kinds of ways to replenish them but it's it's super obtuse if you've never played a game like path of exile where it's just like these this level of build fuckery and like you think you're exploiting the game but it was it was actually meant to be played that way kind of shit like you have to be good at exploiting a game or exploiting a system in a game to be good at Underrail. That's what it feels like. It's cheesing the game. Yeah, it's like unintuitive. It's like unintuitive character progression that was designed to be that way. Yeah, yeah. Even well, early on, just combat related, I found walls and doors. Just, you know, get in the corner, and if they're melee enemies and they only have one tile to get in front of you, they can't hurt you. <laughs> I mean, they can hurt you, but very, very little. Doors, like closed doors and enemies, they have to use up their, their movement points and action points to get through doors. Yep. Yeah, and it's it's unintuitive because that's not how 98% of other games work. Right, so. but they should. Oh, exactly. There's exactly. a lot of systems in this game that I would just be like, I want that, I want that. Like, if I was building this kind of game, I would take all kinds of systems from this game like the door closing thing i love that i fucking love that and i wish they i wish that games would go a step above and make it so that you could push objects in front of doors to make it even harder for them to get in the whole barricading mechanic you know because like or the get out the more that you give me to immerse me into the experience the better because it gets mm. it gets my adrenaline going Sure. And it gets me thinking of ways to exploit the systems to my benefit. Of yeah, there's there's good stuff here, man. But but <clears throat> it needs to be in a game where you're just not getting railroaded constantly for any like a game with a larger margin of error. Like, if you had, if they just expanded the margin of error, like, okay, I don't have to take every feat perfectly for not only my level, but for the end build, okay. Yeah, well, I mean, there's, there isn't a margin of error. Uh, if there was, the combat would be nowhere near as challenging. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, that almost immediately is going to cut 70% of your audience having a game designed that way I feel like it just it just immediately cuts 70% of the people who would normally play your game they no longer want anything to do with it it's a game that has contempt for the player <laughs> but I think that it needs to have that for it to work properly as it currently is yeah right so that's kind of how I, I, I look at it yeah, the way I look at it, and and I used to hate this mentality, but I've grown to be fine with it. Some games are for some people. Some games are not for everybody. And this is a game that's not for everybody. Yeah. So it's it's not meant to be for everybody either. And I think regardless of how smarmy the developer is, I think he's okay with that. Yeah, So that's kind of like how I know. felt about Sekiro. I was like, this is not a game for normal Dark Souls fans. Absolutely not, right? Mm -hmm. It's a totally different beast altogether. And uh, that's what I liked about it. It was just like, because it was the first time a game like that taught me something I didn't know already. You know, it taught me something new. And that's what Under Rail does. Every time I play it, I learn something new about the game that I didn't know already before. And I'm like, oh shit, you could do that? That's fucking cool. You know? <laughs> That's what I love about the shit. And for every one of those episodes, it's like three episodes of the game fucking you from behind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Mm -hmm. yeah. The yeah. question is, how long do you want to keep your ass up for it? And, and <laughs> I'm of the opinion <laughs> I'm of the opinion that my back hurts, you've wore it out enough. <laughs> yeah. Mm. It's just yeah. I will definitely not be going back to this. <laughs> I'm going to keep enduring it. 
I'm, I'm still pretty <laughs> new into it, so I'm going to keep pushing forward. I'm enjoying it so far. But... The story gets really, like, interesting probably halfway through the game, the base game. And I've heard nothing but good things about Expedition, but mm-hmm. like getting to the level where you could do that is not an easy thing to do. Sure, sure. I know I'm a glutton for punishment. I'm, I'm known for playing games that are either bad or really hard and just pushing through until I can get to the end because I like to finish that kind of stuff. So I don't foresee quitting the game out of frustration yet. Right. Yet. You know, the game and the community and the dev want to push me to external sites so much to deal with this game i think i'll just go to an external site and either read the rest of the story or watch it since that's what they want me to do anyway (laughs) fair yeah Yeah, that's reasonable (laughs) uh 